We got, we got a, our final sermon in the Colossians series called The List, and, and I hope you guys had a really good week. Um, glad we're here to worship today. It's, uh, I don't know, that, that worship set was pretty, pretty intense. Um, I, lo- I love those hymns that we sang. I also, also just love lifting up God's great name there. Um, just some powerful songs. I, I grew up listening to music and just being, being in choir and, you know, being able to play guitar now, it's just one of my favorite things. The, the ability to worship God on my own and uh, be, able to, be able to just love the music and just drown in it and worship him. It's, it's good stuff. But it has been good to go through this book of Colossians. I, it's a short little book that has a lot packed into it. And Sonny and I were pretty ambitious and we tried to get through the whole book in four weeks and we did it. Um, not without struggle, not without strain, but uh, again, I want, to, I want to remind you guys to, to read this book on your own because there was, there's no, no way that we could have gotten into the nitty gritty of every single thing. Like chapter two, I just, I just skipped a whole section because I, I didn't think it fit our series well. Uh, so, I mean, again, go back, read chapter two, read, read this whole book. It's a short read. It took me about 30 minutes just to read it. Just read it one time through. So just remember that. And there's a lot of those books in the Bible. There's a lot of short letters that Paul wrote that you could just read through on one glance and, and just get a lot out of it. So I, I hope you've enjoyed the past uh, four weeks. And even so, if, if you, if you want to dive into Colossians even more, uh, I'm going to plug growth group here. We did go, we are going through Colossians a little bit more in growth group. I think next week we'll do chapter four and kind of be done with it or not because uh, how, what verse did you end up in chapter three? Like six. Like six. So, I mean, Scott might even, uh, the other Scott might even go uh, deeper into chapter three next week. And so come to growth group if, you, if you're an adult and want to learn more about Colossians. Come to growth group if you're a kid too. There's, there's stuff for you as well. Today we are going to finish this book. So let me, let me go through a little recap here. Remember that as we started this series, at the top of our list, we wanted to make sure that Christ was in that number one slot, that nothing else reached that number one slot. He must be there. There should be no other place for him. I think John the Baptist said it best. And if there is a verse that actually sums up the whole book of Colossians, it's John 3.30. John Baptist would say that Jesus must increase and I should decrease. And I think, even though I'm not pulling from the book of Colossians, I think that's a perfect verse for what, for what Colossians is all about. Paul has been striving and wanting the Colossian church to increase Jesus in their life and in their church body and decrease themselves. And last week, Sonny talked through chapter 3, and, and what stuck out to me the most was, was 3.15. I got it on the screen for us here. It says, And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace. But he doesn't stop there. He says, And always be thankful. The peace that God gives us should bring us to thankfulness. We should thank God on a daily basis that we can have this peace through Christ Jesus who saved us. And Paul has a lot to talk about when it comes to thankfulness within this book alone. 1.3 talks about it. 2.7 talks about it. 3.15, what we just read, talks about it. And in fact, today you're not getting rid of thankfulness. We're going to talk about it today from chapter 4 as well. But we're not going to start there with thankfulness. Turn with me to chapter 4. We're actually going to start at the and in the middle of chapter four and go to the end, talk about Paul's ending of this chapter, of this uh, book, his uh, goodbye message. And then we'll get, dive into what I believe is Paul's last instruction for, for this church. So if you would turn to me to chapter four of Colossians, we'll start in verse seven. It's not going to be up on the screen, but we're going to talk about goodbyes here. I'm not going to have all of it on the screen because there, there's just a lot here. So just listen to as, as I read or follow along um, in your Bible. So, uh, Tychicus uh, will give you a full report about how I am getting along. So Paul's, Paul is saying that this guy is going to give you a full report, Colossian Church. He's going to tell you about myself. He is a beloved brother and faithful helper who serves with me in the Lord's work. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, to let you know how we are doing and to encourage you. I am also sending Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, one of your own people. 
Um, Onesimus is the main subject of the book of Philemon, okay? So if you go over to Philemon, again, another, another short read. It's probably take you 10 minutes, maybe even less. If you're a fast reader, I'm, I'm not. So it probably take me 30 minutes, let's be honest. Um, but if you read through Philemon, you'll understand that Onesimus was a slave um, and that he had, ran, he had run away from his master and basically he uh, met up with Paul and Paul led him to the Lord. And then, and then just you hear this, uh, you hear Paul talking to Philemon himself and Paul saying, hey, Onesimus is a better person now. He has Christ. So read that book if you have a chance. <clears throat> so verse nine again, I am also sending Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, one of your own people. He and Tychicus will, t- I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. It's, that's a hard word, hard name. He, he and Tychicus will le- tell you everything that's happening here. Aristocarchus, <laughs> I'm sorry, again, these names are hard. I know the next couple. I know the next couple. So, who is in prison with me sends you his greetings, and so does Mark. See, Mark is easy. Let's just keep it, keep it at Mark. And Barnabas, his cousin. Uh, Sonny and I were talking about this. An interesting fact about Mark. This is, this, is the, this is the Mark that Paul had a tiff with in the book of Acts. And, and Paul and him separated because he didn't feel that uh, Mark and him could work well together for the gospel. So he sent Mark away. And, and it's funny that, or it's a good thing that Paul would, would talk through forgiveness in, uh, in the previous chapters of this book and talk about Mark here, whom they must have been for, forgiven each other because he mentions him. So I think that's an interesting thing to do, or to see. As you were instructed before, make Mark welcome if he comes your way. Verse 11, Jesus, the only one we call justice, uh, also sends his greetings. These are the only Jewish believers among my coworkers. They are working with me here for the kingdom of God. And what a comfort they have been. All right, we, we talked about this guy earlier in chapter one. Epiphras, verse 12, a member of your own fellowship and a servant of Christ Jesus sent you his greetings. He always prays earnestly for you, asking God to make you strong and perfect, fully confident that you are following the whole will of God. I can assure you that he prays hard for you and also for the believers in Laodicea and Heropolis. Luke Again, uh, Gospel of Luke, right? Or Gospel of Luke. Um, he wrote both Luke and Acts, and and sometimes, and actually, historically, it believes it's believed that Luke and Acts would be one letter, and that it would all be in one uh, one combined source. And then the when we when the church fathers made or can canonize the the scriptures, they would split it. Luke, the beloved doctor, sends his greetings, and so does Demas. Please give my greetings to our brothers and sisters at Laodicea and to Nympha and the church that meets in her house. After you have read this letter, pass it on to the church at Laodicea so they can read it too. And you should read the letter I wrote to them. And say to Archippus, be sure to carry out the ministry that the Lord gave you. Here is my greeting in my own handwriting, Paul. Remember my chains. May God's grace be with you. So why did I read this all to you? Well, oftentimes we skip these goodbye messages just because there's, there's not a lot within them sometimes. And it doesn't, doesn't seem like we can, we can get something for ourselves here. I'm going to go through some of the things that I uh, saw in this ending passage. And I hope that you glean uh, understanding from this. First, I want to ask you, who is alongside you? Who is beside you? Paul has many people who are working faithfully for God. And he talks about all of them within this passage. We need to consider if we are doing this work, godly work, with others. Or are we just trying to do it on our own? I'm here to, I'm here to submit to you that, that you can't do the work of God on your own. We need others around us. We need this whole church body to be able to share the gospel it's hard, and sometimes you might have one-on-one conversations, but maybe those conversations are led by something you heard from another believer that has helped you through that struggle. Maybe, just maybe, you've gone through a struggle that you're talking to somebody about that they're going through, and somebody counseled you through it, and now you know how to counsel that person through it. And so wh- who is around you working with the gospel? As part of this church, I think and believe that we have many hands working for God. And I'm glad that I'm a part of this work. I'm glad that I'm an intern here. 
Are we surrounding ourselves to help each other to work for the gospel? But look at this. I love this passage. He says, Paul says that Tychicus is a beloved brother and faithful helper who serves, serves with me in the Lord's work. Do you have somebody also in your life that you can say, that is beloved brother that I have that works for the gospel? Do you have a sister in Christ, all you ladies, who sees, sees them working and you're just beloved by the fact that they are working for God's kingdom? I'm sure you do, and, and I do as well. And I hope that we all find somebody that we work well alongside with because, guys, the gospel will reach people. And sometimes we need help so that the gospel can do that. Second, I want to talk to you about Epiphras. He's one of the main characters in this, in this uh, book. And I think in the goodbye message that Paul has, he has some insight from Epiphras for us. I'm going to read it again. It says, Epiphras, a member of your own fellowship and servant of Christ Jesus, sends you his greetings. He always prays earnestly for you, asking God to make you strong and perfect, fully confident that you are following the whole will of God. In the ESV translation, it says he always struggles in prayer for you. He always struggles in prayer for you. I don't know about you, but I believe that it's hard to struggle for somebody in prayer. It's hard. That you would, get, that you would dive so deeply in your prayer that, that it's actually a struggle to get through it. Have you ever prayed so hard for somebody to grow in their faith that it feels like a struggle to get through that prayer? Have you ever done that? I think God wants us to get to this point. God wants us to struggle in our prayers over, over somebody who doesn't know Christ, over somebody who's, who's weak in their faith and they need to grow. I don't want to talk about prayer too much because we're actually going to get into that a little bit further later on. But consider this. It's interesting to think about, and I believe it, it's something, or sorry, I did front to back. <laughs> I believe it's an example of how our prayer life should be, that we should struggle through our prayer life, not, not because prayer isn't supposed to be easy, but more so that you are so burdened and your heart is so weighed down for somebody else who doesn't know the gospel or who is struggling in their walk with Christ. I hope that you get there. I know I'm not, but I, but I hope that all of us collectively will get there. And third, finally, it's, this is a charge for all of us. This is something that I want all of us to grasp. And it's within this goodbye message that oftentimes in, in Paul's letters we skip. It says here, And say to Archippus, be sure to carry out the ministry the Lord gave you. So what does this have to do with us? Paul's talking to a specific person, right? He's saying, Archippus, you need to carry out the ministry that the Lord gave you. Well, put your name there. Put your name there instead of Archippus. Scott, what is the Lord calling you to carry out? Justin, what is the Lord calling you to carry out? Mike, what is the Lord calling you to carry out? Now, Archippus, he's a cool character. He's probably the pastor of this church, or at least one of them. Um, and he's actually um, one of the sons of, of Philemon, I believe. Um, and you'll see, you'll see him uh, show up in the book of Philemon as well. But listen to this. There is something that God has called you to. There's something. And maybe you don't see it just yet. And so maybe you have to start with just the, the calls of the scripture. Calls of the scripture tell you to go to preach the gospel. Calls of the scripture tell you to live a holy life, blameless before God. You're not going to be blameless. It's hard. Can't be perfect. But those are the calls of the scripture. Maybe that's what you need to start with. But maybe you know something specifically that God is calling you to do. What is God calling you and I to fulfill? And Paul here, he says that we need to make sure that we take care of this. So guys, we have a part to play in the kingdom of God. We are a part of it. God asks us to make sure that we fulfill the calling that he has given us. We can't just sit down and pray about it. Sonny says this all the time. Sitting and praying about it is oftentimes disobedience. Just do it. <laughs> There's a call on your life. There's a call on my life. 
to just do it. Do what God has called you to do. I, I need to do this oftentimes. I find myself being a stay-at-home dad, just being, just being home and, and just hanging out with Caleb. You know, I'm, I'm trying to raise him up in the Lord. It's, we can't really have deep gospel conversations just yet. Um, but, but, you know, he's, uh, he's growing and I mean, he's, I mean, yesterday he climbed on Heather, like he's ridiculous. He's getting everywhere. I'm going to have to put gates everywhere and just stay in this area. (laughs) He's so fast, (laughs) but I, but I hope that God is calling me to raise him up, uh, in the Lord and, and, uh, I'm going to, I'm not going to sit and just do that. I'm going to, I'm going to have gospel conversations with my son. I'm going to, when, when he's coherent and can actually speak, so, (laughs) But anyway, those are, that is the goodbye section. And so a charge to you from me, when you read these in the scriptures, don't skip them. There's something there. Just like genealogies. I mean, who likes reading genealogies? <laughs> All right, we got one taker. De- Debbie, Debbie likes reading genealogies. Okay, gene- let, me, let me start. Matt, the Matthew genealogy of Jesus tells you that Jesus is A, a Jew, and B, in the line of David, and he's your king. And so there's things within that genealogy. Um, I believe the genealogy in Luke uh, talks talks about Rahab, the prostitute, being part of Jesus' family. That's so cool. Just thinking about Rahab, just this this sinner, just like all of us, being a part uh, of the family of Jesus. It's it's crazy. So just don't skip sometimes uh, some passages in the scriptures. All right, so that's my rant about Paul's goodbyes. Now, I want to talk to you about give, okay? I got a simple word up there, give, and I'm not going to try to ask you for your money, okay? That's not what this give is about. This give is actually about giving of ourselves, giving ourself up to the Lord. Let's read verses 2 to 4 of chapter 4. We're going backwards verses 2 to 4. We're we're skipping verse 1. I think Sonny talked about that last week. I didn't want to dive into it, so if you want to talk about it later, I will be glad to answer your questions. But let's read verses 2 to 4. It says, Devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Pray for us, too, that God will give us many opportunities to speak about his mysterious plan concerning Christ. That is why I am here in chains. Pray that I will proclaim this message as clearly as I should. I want to talk about this word devote first. I think we as a culture find it easy to devote ourselves to something, right? To something. Let's be honest. In the mornings, who is truly devoted to coffee? I am. I sometimes, Sonny's got two hands up. I, I actually really enjoy my coffee. Like, it just kind of, it doesn't really wake me up. It's just, like, I love the taste of coffee. Um, and so, it's, so sometimes I devote my mornings, okay, got to get coffee going before I can even go up and see Caleb. Like, coffee needs to be in the pot, ready to go. Um, all right, that is something easy to, to devote our lives to, okay? We got, we got devotion to coffee. Who here is devoted to their job? My job right now is stay-at-home dad. I'm devoted to that. I am devoted to being a stay-at-home dad, to raising my kid, making sure he stays alive and all that stuff. (laughs) You know, I'm devoted to that. (laughs) But it can be easy to devote ourselves to our jobs, right? I mean, this, this job, you go there eight hours a day, you know, I'm... My job is 24 hours, 24-7. So, so is most of your parent, you, you parents. That's one of your jobs, by the way. <laughs> I think devotion to something starts with your mornings. I, I mean, I, I just think that, okay, what are you starting your day with? Are you, are you waking up and then lifting up your phone, checking Facebook? Some blank stares right now. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm, I'm going to blank stare at you back because I'm one of those people. that I pick up my phone, check Facebook. I'm a video gamer, so I check IGN, you know, just want to know all the, the news in video gaming. I, I want to know all the news in sports because I, I love sports. I love, some, love me some NBA. I am going to watch the Super Bowl next week. You know, I love it. 
Do you start your day off with prayer? I don't sometimes. And what I have found this week is that I've tried to wake up my best and just get rid of the phone for, I mean, it doesn't even have to be more than five minutes. Just send up a quick prayer to God to start your day off right. Why would Paul, though, want us to to be devoted to prayer? It's because it's to show thankfulness. So Paul says there, I have it highlighted in yellow. Devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. I truly believe that if we saturate our prayer life with thankfulness, it could bring us to a point where we believe that God, that God is not only doing things with our prayers, but we will grow and have a more meaningful relationship with Christ. If we are thankful within our prayers, not only is God going to, I, I believe, answer those prayers, and maybe that answer is a no, but he will. He's also going to help us grow in him. Now, I, I'm not trying to, to, to say like I'm above all of you, but in my prayers, I, I start with thankfulness. It's just, it just needs to be at the forefront because Christ died for me. I mean, this, this guy came to earth and he grew up as a baby. I, I mean, I've seen poopy diapers. Like, I wouldn't want to go through that, you know? And so here we got a man who w- grows up, lives about 30 years old. He starts his ministry. He teaches us some great things. And then he dies on the cross for us. He dies for us. I cannot help but thank him for that. There's no other stance that you should have for that. We should be on our knees thanking God for who who he is and what he's done. I need to thank God because I wouldn't have anything in my life. I wouldn't have my wife. I wouldn't have my kid. I I wouldn't have my church if God didn't die for me. What a savior he is. Man. And so I hope that you saturate your prayer life with thankfulness, that, that you are not only starting with it, but ending with it. And then it's sprinkled in the middle. Thank your Lord. That's why I, I, I texted Karen. I was like, I'm, I'm doing some sermon prep. I text Karen. I'm like, hey, can we sing count your blessings for one of the hymns? Because, you know, count your blessings. That, that is all about thankfulness. I love that hymn, just, just reminding us that we, we have so many things in our life to, to be grateful for God for. We have nothing without him. There's other things that we should obviously be praying for, but thankfulness is what we should start with. But Paul also tells us that we should pray for others as well. It says, pray for us too, that God will give us many opportunities to speak about his mysterious plan concerning Christ. Now, Paul asks for prayer. Paul asks the Colossian church to pray for them. I think that Paul is asking, asking for prayer is a good thing. We should ask our brothers and sisters for, for prayer in Christ because we go through things that God is the only person that can handle. And sometimes those things we just need prayer for. The things that we go through, it's just like, just pray for me, please. Because only God can handle it. It is so vital for us to pray for each other. Galatians 6.2 says that we must carry each other's burdens and not because we can handle more than that other person. No, but Paul would say it is to fulfill the law of Christ. What's the law of Christ? Love. The next time you have somebody ask you for prayer, actually pray for them because it is a chance for you to show the love of Christ to them. It's a chance for you to fill up or fulfill the law, rather. All right, now this is a safe place, so you can raise your hand, or if you don't want to, that's fine. How many of you have had somebody ask you for prayer and you didn't do it? It's, it's something that happens. I, I have no idea how or why. It's like, it's like, hey, can you pray for me? Yeah, I could do it, and then I just don't. It happens. 
And what I've, tr- what I've started to do is that when somebody comes up to ask me for prayer, I do it right there. I'm just like, can I do it right now for you? And if they say, no, I got to go, I, I just like stop whatever I'm doing and just do it. You know, it, it's, it's, something that a pra- it's something that we should practice on a daily basis. You know, people ask for prayer all the time. Have you guys seen our Facebook group? Like, it's, it's all over the board. And, and to be honest, I don't, I don't like writing, you know, that I'm praying on the Facebook group. I, I just hope that you trust that I am. I promise you that once you see, once you see, once I see that faith, I'm lifting you up. I, I just, I just do it. I see you, bam, God, let's go. Let's talk. You know, it's like, it's just a, for me, it's something that I've ingrained in my mind now to, to do. And I, and I hope you guys get better at it um, if, if you guys are struggling with that. Devotion to prayer, though, all right, here's one of those sticky statements. Um, devotion to prayer is devotion to others. Devotion to prayer is devotion to others. Others should be on our mind in both prayer and action. I think prayer is sometimes easier than in action. So, so let's start with that, and then maybe we can get to actions later. Maybe their prayer request is something that we can help out with. Maybe they're struggling financially. Okay, I can lend you 50 bucks. Oh, and by the way, you don't have to repay it. Maybe that's an action that you start off with or something. Maybe that's an example. Let's move on though. Finally, Paul tells us to pray for the gospel to be spread. He says again, pray for us too, that God will give us many opportunities to speak about his mysterious plan concerning Christ. That is why I am here in chains. Pray that I will proclaim this message as clearly as I should. For God to move in this world is what we should be praying for. The gospel should be focused and should be a focus in our prayers. We need to pray that the gospel is spread not only in Reedsburg, not only in Baraboo, not only in the Dells, but in this world. But what specifically can we pray about that? Well, we can pray that God would give us opportunity to share the gospel. That's what Paul says here. How many of you have prayed that prayer before? Give, just give me a chance to share the gospel, God, today. I've, I've prayed that several times. We should always be looking for those opportunities, and I think it's important that we pray those come out. I think it's important that we pray that. When asking for prayer for the gospel to be spread, he asked Paul here, he asked specifically that he would be able to preach it clearly. And it's funny that Paul says that that is how he ought to speak, as clearly as I should. I ought to speak this way. So sometimes we, sometimes we like convolute the gospel. We try to, try to put things in there that are not supposed to go there and we don't effectively share it. For those of us who preach here on this stage, Sonny Ryan, Scott Breckley, myself, this is one of those prayers that we ask for a lot. And I hope that you lift us up in prayer in that. We want the gospel to, prevent, to be presented clearly from this stage. I hope that we do that every single week. I, I took a course in, in uh, Bible college and we had to read a book by... Uh, I believe Brian Chapel, and, and it was it was called Christ Centered Preaching, <clears throat> and it was talking about all how our sermons should always boil down to the gospel. The gospel should be saturated within our sermons. <clears throat> it's 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 actually funny that <laughs> I saw him preach once, and he didn't mention Christ once. It was it was kind of funny, <laughs> but um, if you don't hear Christ though from this stage. If you don't hear that Christ came down from heaven, lived a perfect life, and then died and rose again for you, then we are doing something wrong. If you don't hear that from us each, and we, each week, we're doing something wrong here. I hope that it's clear to you. And if you have questions about the gospel or something, or something that one of us has said, feel free to talk to us. Come up to us. We, we are open and available. We want to talk to you, actually. We want to make sure that Christ comes across clearly and precise from this stage. But most of you don't preach every Sunday. Most of you don't have a rotation of preaching with with Sonny and I. Keep in mind that Paul is asking for prayer for his daily routine. Paul preaching was his job. Paul preaching was the thing that he did on a daily basis. 
And so Paul is just asking, asking prayer for my, what I do, which means that we should be doing the same. We should be trying to seek out those opportunities. We don't have to be on the same level as Paul because him and some other early church members are the reason that we're even a church today. But I hope that a prayer you have in your life is that you would be able and willing to present the gospel clearly and to anybody that you have a conversation with. All right, let's move on. Next, I'm going to talk about live. Live. So Son- Sonny said I had to come up with alliteration. I couldn't. <laughs> Last week he was like, it's up to you, Mike. You got to. And I, ju- I just came up with two words that rhyme. I hope that's okay. <laughs> Give, live. So we're going to work in through five and five and six. Let's, let's read it here. It says, live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversations be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. Paul would tell us how we are supposed to live. We're supposed to live wisely. Who would like to live more wisely? Who of us? Sorry, I got a lot of hand, hands raised, hand raising questions today. I know I, know I would. I, I want to live more wisely. And the ESV actually says to walk in wisdom. To walk in wisdom. Paul is imploring us to have wisdom be our guide. And of course, true wisdom comes from God himself. And so there's nothing that we should be walking without God first going. He says so that we can make the most of every opportunity. Live wisely among those who are not believers. And make the most of every opportunity. This means that wisdom will help those times where we have the opportunity to share the gospel. Um, Sonny's actually said this to me privately, and he might have said this from, from the stage before, but we, whenever we go and have conversations with those, those who don't believe, the gospel should be our agenda. We should have the agenda to share the gospel with them, and sometimes those conversations don't come up. But Jesus should always be on your mind when it comes to sharing and talking and having conversations with people who don't know the Lord. Sometimes it won't come up. But pray for those opportunities and look for those opportunities as well. If we live in the wisdom of God, we will be able to notice those opportunities as well. God's wisdom will, will grant us the, the ability to see those, those opportunities that we can share the gospel. And I hope that we pray for this wisdom. I hope that we ask God for, for, for that wisdom so that we can see somebody in need of the gospel. Everybody needs the gospel. I needed it before I was saved. And so those who don't know Christ, you need the gospel. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Paul continues to tell us how to live. And he says here that living in God is to have speech that is gracious and attractive. First, why does he use the word attractive? Is, it, is this one of those things that we need to be eloquent in speech? And I, I wouldn't be on the stage. <laughs> I'm, I'm not eloquent in speech. Have you, I'm sure you've heard me stumble over words today. I would be disqualified if, it, if this was eloquent speech that he was talking about. The ESV uses the phrase seasoned with salt. So what does that mean? <laughs> Let, let's give an example. Who likes steak? I love steak. <laughs> steak is very good. Um, it's delicious. And uh, so, so let, me, let me ask you this. Do you guys like steak without salt? I mean, okay, maybe it could be tasty, but it's not, it's not better. <laughs> Definitely not better than steak with salt and pepper on there with some seasoning. A steak that has no salt is not as appealing, at least to me. <laughs> I mean, meat is meat. Yes, meat is delicious. But, uh, but if, if you add some salt and pepper, I'm telling you, it's, it's better. You, it's, it's better. <laughs> Come over to my house. I, I'll cook you a burger with steak because steak's expensive. You know, I'll cook you a burger instead <laughs> and put some seasoning on it and then I'll put one without seasoning and I, you'll tell the difference. <laughs> but where does this bring us? What is attractive about the gospel? What is attractive about talking about Jesus. 
I think what is so attractive is, is Jesus himself, the source. Paul would exhort us in the book of Ephesians this. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. Now, if, if we piece together some of the scriptures, if we put some of the other passages in context with this verse that we just read, we would understand that Jesus is actually the source of all truth. In fact, he would call himself the truth. He would say, I'm the way, the life, and the truth. And so if we speak about Jesus, who is the truth, in a loving way, that in and of itself will attract those who do not believe in him. Jesus, Jesus is truth. And what are, what are people seeking in this world? The truth. You hear that question all the time. What's the meaning of life? What's life all about? I'm, I'm here to submit that it's Jesus, but they don't know that. And so what's so attractive about the gospel? I think it's Jesus himself. There is no program that this church can run. There is no sermon that someone preaches, no service that we do that will be attractive unless it is saturated in love and in Jesus. Why do we do this? Well, Paul would tell us, so that you will have the right response for everyone. Everybody is seeking answers. If we, as Christians, seek the gospel, seek the truth, we will have those answers for people. And they will be attractive because it's saturated in Christ. It's saturated in his love. Paul would say so, that we are ready to answer any question that somebody might have. If our lips are ready to speak truth, we can answer people's questions accurately and attractively. Paul would say in the book of Corinthians, he would say in chapter 13 that if you do things without love, it's meaningless, it's worthless. Yeah, <laughs> that's my son. Sorry, he's loud. <laughs> Paul, Paul would say in Corinthians that, you know, if, if you would speak with human eloquence or, you know, or if you would come with like a symbol, it's, it, just, it just clangs like a symbol if you don't have love. If you don't do things with love, there's no point. All your actions, everything you do, if it's not out of love, it's worthless. I mean, read the book of Ecclesi Ecclesiastes. There's a lot of things in this world that are meaningless. There's a lot of things in this world that, that don't hold weight to God. And Solomon would write that, that what you do uh, what you do needs to be unto the glory of God. If we don't love, if we, if we don't do that, there's no point in having a church. There's no point in us coming here on a Sunday and worshiping together. There's no love either A, among us, or B, as we go out of these doors. I come here Every Sunday, not because I'm scheduled to preach, not because I play the guitar in the band. No, it's because I love all you guys. And I want to be with you guys. That's why I come on a Sunday. So that's all I have for today. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through some final uh, suggestions, some final practical application for both Christians and non-Christians, but this is what I have. Let me speak to Christians first. Let me ask you a question. What are you doing to devote yourselves to prayer so that you can effectively share the gospel? Like I said, maybe that first step is making sure that your phone is off in the morning. Maybe that first step is, is making sure that your Bible is on your nightstand. What are you doing to devote yourselves to prayer so that you can effectively share the gospel? There's no way to effectively share the gospel if you're not in a prayer life with God, if you're not sharing your life with God. I'm, I'm going to charge myself. I'm going I'm to tell myself, this week my phone is off in the mornings and I'm praying to God and hanging out with him. <laughs> Start your day off with prayer. End your day with prayer. Send a prayer to God during lunch. 
Take time in your day to bring your prayers to God, but don't forget to start with thankfulness because God did give you another day to live on this earth. Gave you another day. Another question for you Christians. Who in your life walks in wisdom? The reason why I ask this question is because I believe we can learn a lot from other people. So who in your life walks in wisdom? There is no better way to learn how to walk in wisdom than to watch somebody who does. That is how I became a Christian, guys. That is my testimony. I'll share a little bit of my testimony. I was doing drugs and alcohol, not consistently, but I did it. I did marijuana once. Don't ever do that. It's terrible. Um, And then, and then I was drinking with my friends. This guy, God got a hold of this guy who was supplying me with the drugs and alcohol brought me to youth group, brought me to youth group. And then when I got to youth group, I saw Christians who were living wisely and I wanted to do that. Look at other people. Look at Christians in this building right now. How do they walk? Do they walk in the spirit? I would hope so. That's another sermon, Galatians. We we did that. That's on our YouTube channel. (laughs) Fruit of the spirit. I would be willing to bet that those who walk in wisdom are also completely devoted in prayer. I'd be willing to bet that as well. There is no mistake that Paul talks about all of this in a couple verses, in just two paragraphs. A healthy prayer life leads to a godly life. So Christians, I implore you, maybe maybe I'm not the best example. If you want to stare at me, I I try to walk in wisdom. Um, I, I try my best because I... God is just so much smarter than me. The, the Bible would say that his ways are higher than ours. Um, and so I, I hope that I walk in wisdom, but I, there's some godly people in this building right now. There, there are, and, and I, hope you, I hope you see that. Finally, to those who don't believe, first, I want to ask you the same question. <laughs> I want to ask you the same question. Who in your life walks in wisdom? Ask yourself, should I do that? Should I walk the way they walk? Is the way they're walking attractive in the sense of godliness and love? If you don't believe in Christ, ask yourself, why should I walk in wisdom? And you won't have the wisdom of Christ just yet. This wisdom of Christ is is how you walk. It's what you walk by. Because you haven't accepted him, him, you you won't walk like that. But hey, there's people here that do. I can attest to that because I've looked at them and I've, and I've wanted to grow like them. And so if you see somebody here today that, that kind of walks in wisdom, ask yourself, do you want to do that? And then, I, and then I ask you, give it a try. Maybe try praying to God. Maybe, see, maybe seeing what God's all about. Maybe trying to walk in, in more wisdom. Give it a try. And second, I want to give you guys an apology. And I know this is weird to end with, but I want to apologize. If you don't believe in God as your savior, I want to apologize if you did not hear the gospel clearly from me today. I want to say sorry. If you don't know what the gospel is all about, please come talk to me. If you have a question about anything that I've said, come find me. But for good measure, I want to talk about the gospel just a little bit slightly here. I would like you to hear these words from Jesus himself. There is no greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus sums up the gospel in one sentence. He says, I have died because I love you. If you don't know that truth today, and if you want to talk to me about it, Come see me. Jesus died for you and it was all because he loves you. That is the gospel. And again, I apologize if you didn't hear that clearly from me. So, I'm sorry to end somewhat on a somber note, but I'm all set, guys. If you guys have any questions, come talk to me. I I want you guys to know that you are loved as you leave this building. Uh, Let me pray for you and uh, I hope that you have a great afternoon. Stay safe on the roads. It's uh, looking a little slick, but... Lord Jesus, thank you so much for just giving us this opportunity to just study through your word and and just to learn more from you. 
We thank you so much that you would first send your son. We thank you so much that, that he, would, he would come down, he would, he would live, or he would, he would leave his life of being exalted to become a human and then, and then to die and be exalted again. Thank you so much that you would do that for us. We read, it, we read in, in the book of Genesis that, that you had asked Abraham to do that, to sacrifice his son. But then you would offer a sacrifice in, in his son's place. And that's exactly what you've done for us. You've offered your son. And we just thank you that, that you, you would even think of doing that. Lord, as we go from here, I hope and pray that we are devoted to prayer from here on out. That in the mornings we have our phone off. We don't check Facebook first, but we pray. We lift up to you and we thank you for giving us another day. And we thank you for your cross. Lord, if there's nobody here that, if there's somebody here rather that that doesn't know you, I, I pray that they come talk to me. I pray, first of all, I thank you for them. I thank you that they would come through this through these doors and, and listen to some guy talk. And so Lord, I I ask that you would that you would use me to cl- to clearly share the gospel, that there would be no mess about it, that it would be attractive but also gracious. And so Lord, I I pray that that if there's anybody here who doesn't know you, they that they would come to that. They would know you as their savior. Be with us as we go from here. Bless our week and thank you for it. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. You guys have